Hello lovely people and welcome to a new video. And thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. More on their brilliant VPN service and exclusive Black Friday deal later. Are you a butch, a femme or a stem? Am I a butch, a femme or a stem? Stick around to find out. Although I, I guess it is pretty obvious. Fabulous! Let's start with butch. Butch describes a lesbian who... Wait no, let's start with lesbian. Yeah, for real. A lesbian is a woman who loves women. Mostly. There are people who identify as lesbians who don't identify as women, such as some non-binary people who were assigned female at birth. There are also people who identify as lesbians who were assigned male at birth. As always, this channel is a trans-inclusive space. If you disagree, kindly understand that people's existence is not a point of debate. I'm afraid your comfort level with other people's identities is neither here nor there. So disclaimer, although this is a video in which I'm going to be discussing lesbians, types of lesbians, we're gonna have some fun with it. You know, we're a bit of a jokey community, it is how we are, we like our memes. I will generally be using the pronoun she and her, but that doesn't mean that I am excluding those of us who use the pronouns they and them or trans mask people. Special love to those on the more masculine end of our spectrum. We love you, we see you. Now, Butch. Butch describes a lesbian who presents more traditionally masculine than feminine. She might have short hair, dress in men's clothes, and so on. A Butch is more clearly set apart than the other end of the gender presentation spectrum, the femme lesbians. These are lesbians who embrace the more traditionally feminine things like makeup, fancy hairdos, dresses, high heels, etc. Butch and femme sub-identities. But that's not all. Hang on. Within these, we also have soft butch, or a butch lesbian who has some traditionally feminine traits, stone butch, or a butch lesbian who is more conventionally masculine than the average butch lesbian, and glamour butch, or a butch lesbian whose gender presentation includes masculine formal wear, such as suiting. On the feminine end of the spectrum, we've then got the, the high femme, which is uh, exactly what it sounds like. Heightened or hyper-femininity. Uh, uh, if you didn't already know, this, this is me. Hello there. Uh, you may have heard of lipstick lesbians, who are similar to femme and high femme lesbians in their deliberate and joyful femininity. Ultimately, it is up to each individual lesbian to determine which identity fits the best, whether it's feminine, high femme, lipstick, or all of the above. Now, following the naming trend set by lipstick lesbian, we have chapstick lesbian. Chapstick lesbians are lesbians who gender presentation leads a little more towards androgyny. I mean, if you're a woman who's attracted to women at a time where society tells you that only men are attracted to women, well, it really makes you question what man and woman really mean and what men's and women's clothing, hair and style can be. Gender expression comes in all different forms. We have the deliberately masculine or feminine gender presentation of butch and femme lesbians, and we have lesbians who feel like womanhood doesn't quite fit. And we have drag performers. You've probably heard of drag queens, but have you heard of drag kings? Through their performances, drag kings question, satirize. One such drag king is Storm de la Vey, oh, whose name I can never say properly, who is known for throwing the first punch in the 1969 Stonewall Uprising. What a king. Clearly who uh, Kylie Jenner named their daughter after. There is some debate about who threw the very first punch because as you can imagine, things were quite hectic. Now Storm is a biracial drag king who performed in the very first racially integrated drag review and a butch lesbian. Time for a quick break to say thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark. Now, I don't believe in the phrase, if you don't know by now, you never will, because there's always time to educate, learn, and grow. So if you haven't heard about Surfshark and their fantastic app and browser extension, let me tell you all about it. Surfshark's like magic. It allows you to change your virtual location to almost any country in the world, granting you special access to sites, services, and content that you can't usually see. I told you it was magical, kind of. I recently actually had to use it because we were booking some flights between two locations in Malaysia, because we're going to Malaysia in January again. Yay! And Claudia <laughs> to keep uh, redoing it because it wasn't working on her laptop. She kept adding additional baggage or something. I don't know what she was doing, but it kept going wrong. And every time she kept redoing it, the cost of the flight kept going up and up. And I was like, what are you doing? Stop it. Use my laptop where we've got Surfshark. Connect to a different server each time you mess it up and the price will stay the same because it knows every time you rejoin, you really want these tickets. 
Connecting to a VPN server has never been easier, thanks to Surfshark. Also, she's a silly billy because Surfshark actually allows you to use one account on an unlimited number of devices, so I don't know why she's not using the account on her device. Thanks to Surfshark's super strong layers of encryption, Claude and I can both be safe when working and browsing online. Get the exclusive Surfshark Black Friday deal. Enter promo code Jessica to get up to six additional months for free. Surfshark.deals slash Jessica. What are you waiting for? Actually, could you do so after this video? Thanks. Community specific terms. So now we've covered butch, we've covered femme, but what about stem? Have we heard STEM before? STEM, which can actually be spelled two different ways and is not related to science. I'll be honest, I do forget what that stands for. Refers to a lesbian who falls somewhere between femininity and masculinity. Specifically though, a black or Latina lesbian who falls somewhere between femininity and masculinity. Now the word STEM is a combination of stud and femme. A stud lesbian is a lesbian who is traditionally masculine and like STEM, this is a term reserved for the black and Latinx communities. But why does stud and STEM only describe black and Latinx lesbians. Well, it should come as no surprise that historically queer communities in the Western world have been predominantly white. I, I just a, not necessarily that the people who are LGBTQ plus have been making up those numbers, but the ones who have been willing to write it down on a census have been. Also the ones making up the names. As a result, many of the identities we've discussed so far reflect white experiences. There are people of colour who identify with femme, butch and other terms we've discussed and there are also people who prefer terms like stud, stem and other terms which were created by communities of colour to affirm their unique cultural and queer experiences. Same gender loving, also abbreviated as SGL is another community specific term which was created as an alternative for the word gay and lesbian. Same gender loving was coined in the early 1990s as an Afrocentric, culturally affirming identity for African Americans and members of the African diaspora. Historical terms. Now, okay, okay, yeah, sure. The 1990s might sound a little recent, but it's important to remember that while the specific modern terms we use today might be relatively new, queer experiences and queer people have been around forever. I mean, sapphic, the umbrella term for women and feminine people who love each other, refers to Sappho, the ancient Greek poet from over two and a half millennia ago. She's famous in the lesbian community for writing delightfully lesbian poetry. You can learn all about her right here. Just click the card above or the link in the description below. The word lesbian originally referred to someone from the island of Lesbos, Sappho's home. Like if you're from England, you might be called English. If you're from Malaysia, you're Malaysian. If you're from Lesbos, you're a lesbian. Oh, you're talking about Malaysia. Yeah. Women who love women or were love were women w l w have always been around even though we didn't always describe ourselves as butch femme or stem so let's go all the way back to the 1730s where we find one of the first uses of lesbian as we currently understand it not someone who lived on lesbos no but rather someone who is very very gay like me 40 years after lesbian was first used to describe gay women lesbians became known as tommies now this lasted from about the 1770s to the 1810s and there were also other tom word which described women who didn't follow conventional femininity. Think Tom Boy. Starting right in the middle of the era of lesbian Tommies, we have Sapphists, who also derive their name from Sappho. Beginning in the late 1700s, Sapphist was used to describe lesbians. It was used throughout the 1800s and 1900s, and it's even sometimes used today. Now, let's hop our way through history to find the 1930s, where a masculine lesbian could be described as having a manti voice or a manti walk, which I cannot help thinking of a manatee. Really sorry about that, but like... And a feminine lesbian would be described as a Marjorie. Was there like, was there one Marjorie who started the trend and then she was just so gay that they had to name all other feminine lesbians the Margie? Feminine lesbians were also called fluff during the 1940s. 
I could go for that. Speaking of the 1940s, from approximately the 1940s to 1960s, the term Kiki described a lesbian who was neither definitively butch nor definitively femme. Kiki is still in use today in the Kiki ballroom subculture, though it now describes social gatherings, not lesbians. The mid 1900s is where we finally start to see the uses of butch and femme as we know them today. Some of the earliest recorded quotations are found in Vice Versa, subtitled America's Gayest Magazine, brilliant, which was a magazine for lesbians. For lesbians. Lesbians by lesbians. In the October 1947 edition, one author writes, Ah, oh, at night I am just one thing, myself. I am a butch. I am white starch shirt, cufflinks, a bow tie, and close cropped hair. I am a husky throat. I am manners. She also says, I am I. You are you. We are we. The boy girls. The gay born. The daughters of lesbos. Before it definitively described lesbians, butch could refer to a tough person, a butcher's knife, a certain cropped haircut. It wasn't until the 1940s that butch was described just within the lesbian community. In addition to colloquial use, the word butch was also used in the secret language of Polari to describe masculine lesbians. As for femme, there's no consensus about its origin. It does just mean woman in many languages, including French, and it has been used to describe feminine lesbians since the mid 1900s. In the November 1947 edition of Vice Versa, the word femme, which is common in gay parlance, is suggested as the primary descriptor for feminine lesbians over the term fluff. Although I'm a bit sad about that. I, I wish we'd gone with fluff. The butchers and the fluff. <clears throat> Warning for derogatory language about lesbians in three, Two, one. The term baldiker emerged at the turn of the 20th century and the shortened dyke appeared in the 1930s. They were used both by and against lesbians, especially more masculine lesbians. Baldiker and baldike actually originated in black lesbian communities during the Harlem Renaissance. Unfortunately, instead of being used to celebrate black lesbians, they became weaponized against black lesbians and the general lesbian community. Dyke has since been reclaimed by members of the lesbian community though many are still affected by its painful history and prefer not to use it, which is very similar to the word queer, which I covered in my video on the word, which you can watch by clicking the card up here, or again, the link in the description below. Throughout history, there were also a plethora of historical terms describing lesbians, which referenced sexual acts, such as rubster, which was used in the mid 1600s, muff diver, which was used in the early 1900s, and tribade, which was used in the late 1500s and onwards. And I, I don't really know what that one means. Unfortunately, many of these terms were used in a derogatory way um, and not by choice. Also used to slander the probably bisexual Queen Christina. King Christina of Sweden. King. Because she did things like dress in a mix of men's and women's clothing and have amorous relationships with women. You can learn more about her in my video, which is up here. Slang and inside jokes. Today, instead of being tut-tutted for relationships with women like King Christina was, you may be tut-tutted for relationships with men. This is an awkward part. There are so-called gold star lesbians, which first of all, no, no, no gold stars for anyone, no. This term describes a lesbian who has never had sex with a man, which, I mean, I'll state the obvious, sexual history and sexual behavior do not equate sexuality. We should also consider things like compulsory heterosexuality and social pressures. And also, not judge others or ourselves. Someone is not less of a lesbian because they didn't know they were a lesbian until later in life. They're also not less of a lesbian because that's how they were feeling at that point in time. All lesbians should be welcomed into the lesbian community with open arms. I always change my mind. Gold stars for everybody. Speaking of terms in the lesbian community, lesbians who figured their sexuality out later in life, guess what they're called? Baby lesbians, and also baby dykes and baby gays. You can also use the term for just a very young gay. Baby insert something here is a loving moniker in a queer community which describes anyone who is new to their queer identity. This means anybody of any age who is newly figuring out that they're queer. Our friends Jamie and Sharpa, who in addition to being lovely, wonderful people, have fostered a beautiful online community which welcomes baby trans people who are learning about their own transness. We've gone through some lesbian identities. Now, how about some lesbian inside jokes? We have, of course, you hauling. Um, we don't actually have you hauling in the UK, but you know, it's it's a good joke and it's certainly applied. <laughs> Claudia and I are definitely you haul lesbians. We uh, moved in basically on our third date and have not been apart since in nine years. So the joke about lesbians moving too quickly, yeah. 
uh, she proposed after like four months. We're very happily married. We have a small child, it, it works out well. Go for it, go for it. Falling in love with your best friend. Yeah, classic lesbian. But how do you find a lesbian best friend to become your wife? Maybe you've already lucked out and you have one. Maybe you want to find out if someone is a lesbian. They're just generally attracted to women. So you casually slide up and ask them, do you listen to Girl in Red? No. Maybe you've never heard of Girl in Red. Oh, I hadn't. You absolutely should say yes if anyone ever asks you this. Why? Because Girl in Red is a famous Norwegian singer-songwriter whose work is extremely gay. See, I want to be your girlfriend. Or we fell in love in October, for example. I'm not great at music recommendations, but apparently this one's really gay. Or Haley Kyoko. That one's gay. I don't know. Leave other gay music recommendations below, okay? We need to know. The celesbians. The daikons, if you will. These terms are less used than other slang we've mentioned. Still very fun. Like the name suggests, a celesbian is just a celebrity lesbian. And a daikon is someone who the lesbian community finds iconic. Can this also be me? I am, to be clear, definitely a lesbian. Amazing. Style can be hugely personal to one's queer identity. We've talked about the ways in which lesbians explore gender presentation, and while there's no one-to-one -one correlation between sexuality and gender presentation, there's no denying how personal style can be used to express one's queerness. I mean, are you a Doc Martens lesbian? A Converse lesbian? Or a Vans lesbian? None of the above. I mean, I'm a, I'm a heels lesbian. Although that's a thing. My hands are actually doubly floppy though, because I, I have the lesbian fabulousness and, and they don't work. That's a style choice. No, they, they just got paralyzed for a bit, but yeah, style choice. So lesbians realized that so many of us love the same kinds of shoes, and thus shoe lesbians were born. Fun fact, lesbians' relationship to Doc Martens actually dates back to the women's liberation movement of the 1970s, when docs were favored by the butch women who worked in labor-intensive jobs. None of these shoes are a definitive declaration of one's queerness. That's just a fun inside joke. Have you also noticed how many vintage lesbians there are? There are many, many, many vintage lesbians. I see you. Just remember, the only way to know if someone is queer is if they tell you. So, wink at them. Someone could just like Doc Martens, or Converse, or the lesbian vans. Or maybe they're closeted and finding subtle ways to express their queerness in a way that feels safe. Now, this video has been very focused on English language lesbian slang, because I speak English and sometimes I even struggle with that. But I also have a video about queer sign language, so do go and check that out. It's, it's really old and I should redo it. So... Tell me if you'd like a redo of the uh, queer sign language. But it is, I should warn you, in British sign language. So if you know American sign language, it's a different thing. People have gotten confused before. I absolutely love learning about queer language used around the world, so please, please, please share whatever queer and lesbian terms using your own communities down below. I can't wait to read your comments. And thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Remember to click the link in the description or head to surfshark.deals slash Jessica for the exclusive Black Friday deal. Enter promo code Jessica to get six additional months for free. That is six additional months. That is a lot, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.